Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make an elementary school. Throughout this tutorial, I will show you how to make the school building itself, a playground, a car park, I'll even show you how to make a school bus, We will be making the entire inside of the school, including this hallway slash cloakroom, the gym, a computer lab, a general classroom, a music class, and a science classroom. Please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you want to see next. But without any further ado, let's get started. This is the amount of space required to make the school. And here are all of the materials that we will need to make the entire outside of our school. We will, however, be grabbing some more stuff when we move inside. But for now, those will do. Begin by placing a row of 11 stone bricks in a row on the ground. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We then want to extend forwards by 2. 1, 2. And then right by 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then inwards by 2. 1, 2. And then extend to the right by 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We now want to extend backwards by 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. We now want to extend across the back of the build by 25. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. We then want to extend out of the back of this block by 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then across. And then join all the way back to where we very first started. Now, the end result of that will look like this. Next, we are going to add some shape to the school. Come all the way back to where we very first started and place a stone brick block on top of that block. Then place 10 bricks extending upwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We are also going to grab the smooth stone slabs and we'll place one on top here. We then want to extend the smooth stone slabs all the way over to the right. And the idea is that we will want to join down to this block here. So not this corner block, but the block just to the left of here. So we'll place a stone brick on top of this, bricks extending up like so, and then we'll extend these slabs across the top. Then at the bottom here, we want to place a stone brick extending inwards from the left side here 
two upside down smooth quartz stairs, two stone bricks, two upside down stairs, and then a stone brick like this. Add two rows of good old glass block on top of these, white concrete on top of those. Then two rows of bricks on top of the white concretes. Then upside down smooth quartz stairs on top of those, which is quite difficult to place just by their lonesome. Two more rows of glass. A row of white concrete. And then finally, smooth quartz slabs in front of the lower half of the white concrete. Like this. We can now even fill this in using brick. Perfect. What we now want to do is directly next to this area, we want to place a stone brick here on top of this block, with then five bricks on top of this. One, two, three, four, five. Then we want to take this row and extend it forwards along the actual grid, and then extend one row to the right, place a glass block, and then we're going to need a couple of different blocks here. We then want to place a glass pane, leave a gap of two, glass pane, glass block, and then we should be able to place stone bricks along the right. So the glass blocks and accompanying glass pane want to get extended up by two rows each, and then we want to place end rods in front of the middle glass pane blocks. Then we want to extend the row of five bricks that we placed earlier, forwards and then across the top and then also down onto the stone bricks that we've placed. The end result should look like this. So the next thing that we're going to do is place a row of bricks in front of the glass pane area to the glass pane area. We then, I'm starting to think that we might add an addition, we might extend it an additional row forwards and then place stone bricks all the way around the edge of this, like so. We then want to place stone brick wall extending outwards from these corners and the wall wants to be four rows high in total. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then going to grab the light gray concrete stick them on top of the stone brick walls, join them together, backwards like this, and then fill the top of this in, and this is just going to be an overhang. We should be able to place, if we leave a gap of one extending inwards diagonally here, we should be able to place one, two, three, four, five, six white concretes here in this position, kind of like on the inside of the middle of the light grey concrete where we will be able to write school in banners later. So we also want to add a little bit of leaves around this area as well, so just kind of like around the edge of this, like so, here and here. And we also want to mark out where we are going to place some smooth stone slabs on top of these bricks here as well later on, so just like this. So now that we've done that, we can move on to the right here. And the first thing that we want to do first, we're going to need these stone bricks again. So we want to place a layer of stone bricks along the right and then the side here, extending back towards the back of the build. And we'll just leave it at that for now. We then want to place bricks on the corner of the stone bricks here and extend in one and then place two glass block, two bricks two glass block, two bricks, two glass block, and then two bricks extending in. We then want to place bricks around here in such a way that we want bricks to extend half a row above the smooth stone slabs here. And then we want to double up on these glass block rows and then fill in between these in using bricks just like this, leading all the way up to the top, just like so. We can fill the entire right side of the school in using bricks, just like so. Mm -hmm. 
And now that we have filled the front and the side in here, we now want to come towards the back of the build. And we're going to start off by extending this corner block inwards by 16 using bricks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Which we then want to extend all the way forwards like this. And it will just sit behind the... Uh, smooth stone slabs like so and then we can just connect this together or alternatively we could shave this off here and then add smooth stone slabs like this so that there is a little bit of depth that might be the way to go so the idea would then be to extend these bricks here down to the ground like so and then the smooth stone slabs like the smooth stone slabs begin here right so we want to extend these all the way back and these want to kind of like first of all they just want to hover above where we have the stone bricks below us and then extend like this and then directly next to this we want to have a stone brick here obviously we will also want to have a stone brick here as well we pretty much have two layers of stone bricks all the way along the base of our build like this but we want to start this part of the school right next to here so this will extend up and then forwards and join to that part so we then want to extend backwards and then down to the corner and once again i should just add this actually so um just a row of stone bricks just along the side here we can't do the same for the rest of it because there's like windows built into the stairs area or there's windows built into the stone brick area. And then we want to extend the top across. And then this wants to extend across and join to the front. So I'm just going to extend this back as well. Just so that we are a bit more precise. There we go. And then ultimately this will join down to the corner. And essentially all we've done is just made a bunch of uh, different rectangles. Pretty much. So that's kind of like the outline of the school. Let's add in a little bit more detail. So, on the back left-hand side here, there aren't really any windows. We definitely could add some, but that's a decision for later. So, over here, there is going to be a door. This is pretty much going to coincide with the door that we have on the front of the build, and it's going to be built into the actual, like, stone bricks here. So, I can't actually tell which two blocks this is, so I'm just going to extend these backwards like this. Oh, there, we actually nailed it. That's perfect. So, this is going to be a double door, and everywhere around this, we want to build up using bricks. including this area here on the side as well. And we can also fill this in as well, just next to the smooth stone slabs moving forwards and extend up and connect to the outline. So what we can also do as well is take the smooth stone slab area here and fill this in. And what we can also do is continue to extend these smooth stone slabs backwards and line them up with the back of the school. The reason being is because we can then extend some stone brick wall all the way down here 
it will almost touch the ground, but this is going to be like an overhang where you can like eat lunch and this is actually going to connect to the playground. Which we can actually just add the outline for and all we will need is some andensite and some iron bars. So this extends from the back corner of the school and it joins in kind of an L shape to the opposite back corner of the school, like this. And we will have a couple of rows of iron bars all the way around this and it's going to be kind of elevated as well, which is nice. And we will be filling this in with andensite later. So, for the actual back part of the school here that will have classrooms, we pretty much want to emulate what we have on the front over there. So we will just need some smooth quartz stairs, some smooth quartz slabs, and we have pretty much everything else we need. We need the stone bricks as well. So, starting from this stone brick block here on the left side, we want to place a stone brick extending in. Two upside down smooth quartz stairs, two stone bricks, two upside down stairs, stone bricks, two rows of glass block on top of the smooth quartz stairs with white concrete on top of the glass, then two rows of bricks on top of the white concrete extending up with then upside down smooth quartz stairs on top of the bricks, like so. We then want to place two rows of glass on top of the smooth quartz stairs with white concrete on top of the glass and then smooth quartz slabs in front of the lower half of the white concrete. We then want to fill the remaining part of this wall in using bricks like this. And there we go, that's perfect. We can now move on to the side here. So starting all the way at the front over here on the right, we want to place three stone bricks extending inwards. One, two, three. Then three upside down smooth quartz stairs. One, two, three. And then two rows of glass on top of the stairs. One, two. Row of white concrete on top. Two rows of bricks on top of the white concrete with upside down smooth quartz stairs on top of the bricks, two rows of glass on top of the smooth quartz stairs, then white concrete on top of that. Perfect. We can then place smooth quartz slabs in front of the white concrete at the top of the windows here. And then we want to leave a gap of seven on the left using, well, we'll start at the bottom, so we'll place seven stone bricks extending left of this window, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then three upside down smooth quartz stairs. And then two rows of glass on top. White concrete on top of that. Bricks on top of the white concrete. And then upside down smooth quartz stairs on top of the bricks. And then two rows of glass on top of the smooth quartz. White concrete on top of that. And then of course we want to add the smooth quartz slabs in front of the lower half of the white concrete. Starting at the bottom, we want to place a row of seven stone bricks left of the smooth quartz stairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With then three upside down smooth quartz stairs to the left. One, two, three. Two rows of glass on top. One, two. Row of white concrete on top of that. And then this is just a single window, so we'll have a row of smooth quartz slabs in front of that. And that's pretty much the most complicated part of this side of the build. So we can add an extra row of stone bricks just here along the bottom, fill in between all of the windows in using bricks, and then we can move on to the roof.
We then want to grab smooth stone slabs and we want to place smooth stone slabs on top of the entire roof section. So pretty much just extend them from the front all the way back, just across like this in a rectangular shape and then we will get them all filled in. So with all of that filled in, that just leaves this building here on the right. So there is a particular way of filling this roof in, which is why we've left it until last. On the front of the build, we want to add two rows of bricks directly spanning the width of the front. So just extending inwards two rows of bricks at the front. Then we want to place on the back three rows of bricks extending inward, so like one, two, three, and these of course also extend across the width of this part. We then want to add three rows of bricks extending inwards also, one, two, three, from the right side, and these want to extend front to back. We then want to place nine rows of glass block that sits in between the space that we have made. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like this. This extends across and then forwards. And then we can fill the right side in with glass and this left side in here using bricks. Now with that complete, we have pretty much made the major structure of the school. So next up, we have to do a bit of landscaping. We're going to start by placing five rows of smooth stone extending forwards in front of the width of the entrance here. So one, two, three, four, five like this. And these are all going to be filled in with smooth stone. The last two rows of these on the left and right want to extend to the outer parts of the grid. On the right side, however, we don't want to fill in the entire thing with smooth stone as we also want to have access to a car park. So, these last four rows, one, two, three, four, want to be occupied with grey concrete, and then we just want to fill the rest of it in using smooth stone. So we also want to fill the area in front of this in using grey concrete. So this is just going to extend and fill up the rest of the grid. It equates to about four entire rows just across the entire width of the grid that we've made, so nice and easy to add.
So now that we have marked that out on the front of the build, we can now come to the side of the build and we want to mark out the car park a little better. So this is really easy. We want to place rows of six yellow carpet extending from, first of all, the front right hand corner of the school. One, two, three, four, five, six, like this. We then want to leave a gap of three. One, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Leave a gap of three, row of six carpet gap of three, six carpet, and then I think that we might add one more. I think that that'll be good. So we will have four car parking spaces like this. So what we will then want to do is extend the grey concrete inwards here and also grey concrete inwards here connecting to the yellow carpet. So you can see what has to be filled in with grey concrete just like so. And then this area here on the back, so pretty much this rectangular shape here, we want to fill in using lime terracotta. So here and here as well. The inside of this will want to be filled in with andensite. So that is all nice and marked out for us. The only things that we want to add are some trees. So we are going to place some trees. How do we want to position these? So if we leave a gap of one, two, three from the end of this car parking space here, so like one, two, three, so this fourth block, I think that we'll go with, we then want to extend inwards one, two. Let's try this and we'll place an oak leaf, an oak wood. We'll then leave a gap of one, two, three, oak wood, one, two, three, oak wood, and then one, two, ah, oh, that's perfect, see? So we now have three perfectly positioned trees extending forwards just like this. And I think I, we could even cut out one of the car parking spaces if we wanted to, but I think that that's perfect. So basically all we're gonna do is extend another oak wood on top of these, add oak leaves on top of that, extend the oak leaves outwards in every single direction so that will leave like a gap of one between all of the trees just like this extend outwards in every single direction and then add a layer of leaves on top so just like so so now we have three trees but more importantly we have marked out for us every single portion of the school that needs filling in and changing with a different material well, let's start from the front, shall we? So, just to reiterate, the first four rows of the grid are going to be replaced using grey concrete. We then have two rows of smooth stone, which act as a pavement, which leads into the entrance of the school. The grass block behind it on the left and right sides are going to be replaced using lime terracotta.
We also have a small road that leads into the car park, which also has to become grey concrete, and we also have to fill in between all of the car parking spaces as well. which will then leave a small section in the back right side of the school which has to be replaced using lime terracotta. And then, last but not least, we have to replace all of the playground, or rather fill the playground in, using andensite. Next, we are going to make the sign, just in case we weren't sure what this building's for. Throw down a loom, open it up, and place a white banner in there, with some black dye. So the first letter we have to make is S, a horizontal row across the top, the bottom, and a diagonal row top left corner to bottom right corner. S. Next, we have to make C, that's a vertical row of black on the left side, horizontal across the top, and the bottom. C. Next, we have to make H. So we want to place a vertical row of black on the left side, the right side, and then a horizontal row of black straight through the middle. H. Next is O. So that's a vertical row of black on the left, right, horizontal on the top, and then the bottom. O. Now, last but not least, we have a vertical row of black on the left side and a horizontal row of black along the bottom. L. So we would typically need two O's, but we can just reuse that one. So if we come all the way up to our white concrete sign here, S C H O O L, and there we have school. Next, we are going to make the school bus. So I'm going to position this all the way over here on the right side of our build. And we are just going to leave maybe a gap of one or two from the end of the pavement here. And then we want to place a black concrete right next to the pavement. We want to place a smooth stone slab behind the black concrete. Extend across by three. One, two, three like this. Place a black concrete in front of that third slab. And then we want to place four more rows of smooth stone slabs extending forwards from each wheel. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
We then want to place black concrete in front of these slabs, place an additional row of slabs, and then connect them together and also fill inside of the school bus in using smooth stone slabs like this to give us a base. Then place two furnaces in front on the front of the bus in the two middle blocks. So it's kind of up to you which side you want the front of your bus to be. I want my bus kind of like facing towards the school. So these are the two front middle blocks for me. We then want to place yellow concrete either side of them. Then on the left side of your bus, as you look at it from the front, this is how we get on and off. So we are going to place a yellow concrete extending backwards. We then want to place an oak door. And then we can simply continue by placing an entire layer of yellow concrete all the way around the edge of the bus like this. We then want to place a layer of glass paint on top of the front of the bus, spanning left to right like so. With a layer of black carpet on top of the glass paint like this. We then want to place black concrete behind the end glass panes and then we want to follow this pattern pretty much so on the right side of the bus glass pane black concrete glass pane black concrete glass pane black concrete then across the back we'll have two glass panes here black concrete on the end and then extending towards the front glass pane black concrete glass pane black concrete just like this we then want to place yellow concrete directly above the rest of the bus so pretty much just joining everything together and along the top that is going to fill the entire top of the bus in like so we then want to add acacia buttons on the sides of the four corners of the school bus and then stone buttons in the sides of the wheels like so we now have to grab some more materials to decorate this so, first of all, we want to give the bus headlights by placing glow item frames left and right of these two furnaces. Item frames in front of the top two corners of the front of the bus with red concrete inside of them. Levers left and right of the black concrete behind the windows. We then want to place item frames on the back bottom two corners of the bus with red concrete behind these. And then inside of the bus, we want to place an end rod here in front of the left furnace with an oak trap door on top, lever to the right of it, and then a polished deep slate stair behind it. We can then leave a gap, place a deep slate stair, and then across the back of the bus, we can just have two stairs like this. So nice, small little school bus, absolutely perfectly blends in to our school, which leaves us one thing left to do for the outside of the build. Next, we are going to make the playground on the back of the build. So first of all, we are going to make a bunch of lunch tables. So these are made using a variety of spruce blocks and we start all the way over here in this corner and then move outwards directly. So we want to place a spruce stair here, left of this, then in front of this, spruce fence, spruce pressure plate on top of the fence, and then back it with some opposite facing spruce stair. We can then leave a gap of two, and then we can have the same exact table. So gap of two, stair, fence, pressure plate, and then stair on the opposite side, like this. We then want to leave a gap of one, and then we want to have a similar array of tables. So we want to have the exact same back table here, like this, so an absolute copy, but here, at the front, we just want to have a single table like this. We don't want to have the stairs on the opposite side because this is, of course, the entrance. And we still want to be undercover. So we then want to add a bin in the form of a cauldron. Maybe we'll leave a gap, a cauldron, and then an oak trap door like this. And then we have a nice little seating area for lunch. We are going to place a calcite block here randomly. You'll see why in a second. And then on the opposite side over here, we want to make a, uh, a football net. So... Uh, this is basically made, it doesn't necessarily have to be kind of like in the middle because I don't believe that this is an odd number of blocks anyway. It might be actually, so I think it's a row of 11. So if we start from the end here and we move in one, two, three blocks, place a diorite wall, leave a gap of one, two, three, diorite wall, then we are not in 
the middle. I guess it doesn't even have to be centered, so it can actually be quite a big goal. So if we leave a gap of two on the left and a gap of two on the right, and then we have our diorite walls, make them two rows high, we then want to place cobweb behind these, so just directly behind the hole here like this, just up against the fence. Uh, we could even move it one row inwards if you wanted to, so that there is a little bit of gap between this and the edge of the, uh, the, edge of the actual playground, so like here, and then we can just knock out this back row, and then here, and then we would need string for this next part, so basically what I want to do is just place string in between the diorite like this, and then white carpet on top of the wall, and the string like so. So we have a football, we have a goal, what more could you need? We are also going to make like a little hopscotch area as well, which we need a bunch of carpets for. So we are going to start this somewhere near the bin area here, we'll leave like a couple of rows away from the bin and then like move a row or two inwards here. And we want to start off by placing an orange carpet, magenta carpet behind, lime carpet behind that, red carpet behind that, cyan carpet behind that. Then we take the magenta and we place a yellow carpet on one side, light blue on the other. We take the red, we place dark blue and then pink on the other, and then that's it. That's a nice little hopscotch area. And if there's absolutely anything else that you want to add, you feel free, but I mean, there's not too much space back here. And honestly, back when I was in elementary school, or we'd call it primary school over here, we, they, they, this was pretty much it. We, we didn't really have too much of a fun area. This is, this is about as exciting as it got. Before we begin building inside of the school, we have to grab a whole new bunch of materials. So here, are all of the materials that we will need to complete the inside of the school. So once we have what we need, we can head inside. And the first thing that we are going to do is separate the school into two halves. So we have a gym here on the right, and then we have the rest of the school here over on the left. So the gym starts here in this position, next to the door, we leave a gap of one, and then we want to place a strip of stone bricks that just cuts this area in half, like so. So the reason that that is important is because everywhere that's not the gym, we can fill the floor in using oak planks. The gym is a little bit more complicated, so we'll be saving that until a little bit later. But the floor is placed directly onto the ground, and we will just literally walk directly up and into the school. So fill it all in with oak planks. So with the entire ground level, minus the gym, filled in using oak planks, the next thing that we are going to do is separate the school a little bit further. So I want you to locate that window over there on the left side of the school. It's the middle window on the ground level. This window is important because we want to, on the left and right side, we want to leave a gap of two, one, two, and then on the third block, here on the left, we are going to place a row of nine stone bricks extending outwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which will then divert off and join the front of the school here. 
but on the right side we will take the one, two, third block and we will connect it to the pre-existing wall. So this is a hallway essentially and another part of this hallway is that we will be able to place stairs next to the end here so right next to this stone brick, we should be able to place a set of stairs. Now, if we just facilitate this by placing a series of bricks extending up from this stone brick base here, just place a set of bricks that leads all the way up to here. This should be this should do. And then that will allow us to place oak stairs leading all the way up. And the stone and, and the oak stairs will stop three rows away from the wall. So you can literally connect this one, two, three to the wall like this. So we can actually extend this across, like so, extend the last three rows. And we also want to double up on the oak stairs as well, so add another row next to these. And then bricks next to this. And then we can join this down to the ground using stone brick wall as well. Upside down oak stairs underneath the oak stairs that we already have. And then lastly, we can place some glass pane on the bricks. And then for the surrounding area, a couple of brown glazed terracotta next to this window here with a couple of rows of oak leaves on top, just because it's a bit barren up here, if not. And a similar thing just on the ground level as well. So just some plants. Because it just kind of like helps to break up the area a little bit. So what we can also do as well is add bricks here. So bricks are extending up from this wall all the way up, all the way up, and eventually they will hit the ceiling. So that is the end goal, by the way. I should point that out. But actually, actually, this this is easiest whilst we do. We want to be able to access these rooms as well, right? So um, these are going to be classrooms of varying sorts on the left and right up here. And we literally walk into the classrooms directly from the oak planks here. So we can extend a row of oak planks into these rooms like this and this is going to be the floor so it's probably easiest to add these first of all and these rooms as well I should point out actually we'll, we will point it out a little bit later but I, I guess since I've already started talking about it th there is a double wall for these rooms so like once we have raised up these bricks right and we also want the first row of bricks to be stone bricks so like from the outside, like it's a bit of continuity. We actually want to, this first wall here, we want to double wall because we are going to place a blackboard or a whiteboard or something in the wall in each one of the classrooms. So um, we just need to leave enough room that we can walk in and out like this. You can place the door on the outside here and then it's just a little bit thicker. It's almost imperceptible really. And into the wall will be built, you know, various different kinds of boards. And uh, we still have a nice amount of classroom left and we want to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So fill in the floor, add the double wall, make sure that we can actually like walk into the classroom as well. And once we have done this upstairs, we have two classrooms sorted out. We actually want to do the same downstairs as well, and they'll pretty much be positioned in the exact same way as well, but of course on the ground level. So downstairs, we've already got most of this made for us. We just have to add a wall here, building this all the way up to the ceiling. And then we just have to add the double wall as well, because once again, I mean, in every single classroom, pretty much, except one, we won't have to do this in one of them. And I guess that we've kind of naturally picked which one that will be for ourselves. 
Um, we will have the blackboard built in there, and then oak door here, oak door here, and then this room doesn't have to have a double wall, but we will give it one anyway, but we won't build anything into it, and we can always remove it if, uh, if we don't like it as well, so... Uh, there we go, that's perfect. So we have each one of the four varying classrooms made, and now we just have to seal up the gym as well. So I suppose that we should, first of all, we should add a door onto, so this is how we like get in and out of uh, the actual like playground right here. It's directly opposite the actual uh, main entrance. We should seal up this wall as well, and we are also just going to do it in such a way that this wall is nice and smooth, so we'll just add a little bit of a fake wall here. That's perfect. Well, it's real, but, you know, there's no purpose for it other than to seal things up. We want to leave a gap of one from the end here, and we actually want to have a triple door, and we want to replace this with oak plank, so we'll have a triple door. So this is opposite the window there, that's why I have opted for three doors instead of the traditional one, or perhaps even two. And we are going to build up this wall all the way up to the ceiling, and I suppose that the first room that we will work on is going to be the gym. Moving on in. So, the gym floor, funnily enough, is actually very similar to the ceiling. Along this back wall here, we want to place a row of one, two, three oak planks that extends from the front of the school to the back of the school. On the left side of the gym, the back of the gym, we want to have one, two, three rows of oak planks that span the width of the gym. On the front, we want to have two rows of oak planks, once again spanning the width of the gym. And then last but not least, we want to place a row of white concrete against the oak planks over here and extend the left and right sides forwards by eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we can just extend across and then join in a rectangle. Which then we can fill the remaining area on the outside of this court in using oak planks. We can add a white concrete to the center, which I'm going to call this block by the looks of it. So it's definitely the center here. One, two, three, four, five this way. One, two, three, four, five that way. That's perfect. And then we can fill the middle of this in using birch planks. We can then add seating to the gym by adding a row of, first of all, blue concrete that is the length of this court here, just against this back wall. And then we can place smooth quarter stairs on top, blue concrete in front, and then smooth quarter stairs in front of this. The next thing that we're going to do is place on the ends of the court the actual hoops. So we want to place one, two, three, blackstone wall extending up and behind, coinciding with the center block here just outside of the white concrete line. Red wall in front of the top block and then white stained glass pane surrounding the red wall like this except underneath and then adding an additional row of white glass pane left and right like this. We are going to do the same on the opposite side, so one, two, three, red wall, glass pane surrounding this. Additional row on the left and right sides, like so. And then orange concrete right in the middle, or a shulker, it kind of depends which one you would prefer. Uh, I also like concrete powder as well. But there we go, that is pretty much the entire gym complete. And in doing that, we can now move on to the hallway. So, for the hallway, first of all, I'm just going to lay out some red carpet, I think. So, we'll just start with the width from this glass pane to this glass pane, and we'll extend it all the way to the back of the build here. So, the reason that I want this is because it kind of leads you to the entrances. So, like, if you follow this along, you'll naturally find these doors. And I'm thinking if we should have it extend into like here as well like we could we could literally just have red carpet placed in such a way that it's 
it kind of sits around I I don't know maybe like here see how it look like I don't want it everywhere per se but like I, I think that it definitely would look good if it didn't inhabit the floor because I, I think that it just helps to break up the color pattern a little bit like this uh, it just introduces a new color to the palette and if we kind of like place it like this it sort of leads us around the base of the school like all of the places uh, regardless, I also want to install some light into the ceiling. So, first of all, we are going to add some bricks just underneath here and here. So, kind of like keeping these two areas separate. And then, I'm going to add a strip of shroom light here. Coinciding with the two middle blocks of the entrance. And then, we just have to divide this up in such a way that it looks good. So, maybe like we'll leave a... We'll leave three alone, destroy one, three, destroy one. That's actually perfect. See how that just fits the ceiling perfectly. And then we'll place this. And then I'm actually thinking whether smooth stone would be a good... I mean, you could use stone bricks, of course, although that is a little bit... You know, we've already used that. I'm wondering if we did use smooth stone around this, whether this would uh, actually look quite cool. So... I don't think we can destroy these bricks. Oh no, we can destroy these bricks. Let's destroy these bricks, turn this into smooth stone also. Extend this all the way to the end. And then if we actually turn this, uh, see this is a problem. So we could have this, but then we have, but then we could actually have another layer of stone bricks, just uh, another layer of bricks on the end here. Add another row underneath this. I don't think that this actually gets in the way. I don't know if that's, that's a, uh, that's, I mean, we, we could just then actually have just smooth stone all the way through. Like, if we have, leave a gap, one, two, three, gap, one, two, three, then it hits this back wall. That doesn't really make sense. Maybe we'll just keep this separate. So, let's just fill this in with smooth stone. Figuring these things out on the fly, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. That's perfect. And then, the, the only thing that I don't like is I, I kind of like just leaving that as it is. And then maybe, just maybe, just like adding some brick slams underneath this. Like, I don't want it to be like a full, um, I, I don't want like a full row. There's something that kind of irks me about that. So maybe just like this. Then that's okay. And then we've kind of like introduced a little bit of depth in here. And it's a little bit different for this part of the ceiling. I think that we can just add a row of bricks here and then maybe just like extend this out like so and then I think that we can destroy this row yeah that's perfectly fine so we are going to build into the wall slash against the wall and we are going to on the left here we want to place a bookshelf and then two green concrete and then in front of this left concrete we want to place a chest and then next to this an armor stand then we're going to leave a gap and then, actually, we'll leave a gap of two. Chest, armor stand, gap of two. Chest, armor stand, like this. And then that should actually work out nicely. And behind the chests and armor stands, we will place green concrete. And in between them, we will place bookshelves. And then we want to build up the bookshelves to be three rows high in total. And the same for the green concretes also. We want to place tripwire hooks around the armor stand and above the chest, so kind of like this. And then we have to build some... So this is this is where it gets tricky. We want to place some spruce trap doors flipped up around this. So on both sides, one, two, three, like this. And then, well, we could remove the top set of... Uh, of hooks or alternatively let's place I, I guess we'll just extend out the bricks like this and then we'll just place spruce trap doors across the top and we'll do this on both sides so one two three one two three one uh, actually it'll be easier if we flip this up and then one two three and then on this side as well one two three let's get these flipped up Trapdoors across the top. There we go. That's perfect. Maybe we even connect all the trapdoors together like this so that it's like a nice solid unit. 
and yeah, that's that, that's looking pretty good. What I'm thinking is, can we? Would it look weird to kind of like just box this in here, like this, or and then maybe just even extend across the top? Actually, that I, that would actually throw the symmetry off. So we'll just leave that alone, I think, and we will just maybe maybe we'll just get rid of these bookshelves here in this wall. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's a little compromise, and I think uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. We should probably also fill the floor in or the rug that we've marked out using the red carpet or red wool. Actually, we could turn it into carpet. Actually, that would uh, that would work. I don't think that there's anywhere that we wouldn't be able to place it except maybe where this wall connects to the ground. There we go, perfect. And I also want to add just a bunch of posters to the wall as well. So like, these are probably gonna end up being too big, but we can also always edit these. Like there was always a bunch of posters like around school, like all the time. And um, like we can just get rid of some of these. So like like this, and obviously we can kind of like help shape these, but in, in kind of like no particular I mean, th th this this looks insane. This this we're definitely going to have to remove some, but like this, and then maybe just make it so that they're not really any higher than that. Maybe like I, can't, I want the big yeah. There we go. So that one, and then if we like so just like a bunch of posters, kind of just like bring the walls to life a little bit. Not those. This one, you know, something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be like specifically like these, you can do it in like a different pattern, but I like the idea of there like being posters and stuff on the wall advertising perhaps different clubs and what have you. Um, I think that that would definitely look good. I'm thinking that maybe we should even put like a little fountain here, like a drinks fountain, so this would be really, really easy to add. We just need a stair, so like uh, an upside down smooth court stair with like a tripwire hook, I think would be absolutely perfect. And we also just need to add some lighting out here as well. So we could even, so here's a problem with the ceiling being so high is that it's kind of hard to add. And there's also slabs as well. So like we can't even add it in this particular part, but um, what? How, how could we add lighting? I guess it's just going to be good old fashioned torches, ladies and gentlemen, unless we want to use uh, something else. But uh, I just want to highlight where the particular rooms are using light. Uh, so that we're drawn in a little bit. So I think that that also helps to kind of like, there we go, helps guide us a little bit. We could extend these slabs backwards, but I, I don't know. I don't know about that. I, because then we we want to have we would want to have like this, like a lip. Turn this into bricks, and then we could continue to have smooth stone instead of the bricks, and then I, that would look a little bit cleaner. I think so. Maybe we will try that. Okay, I think I figured it out. If we leave a gap of one from each end and then place two shroom light, leave a gap of two, two shroom light, so on and so forth, looping all the way back, then we have a nice, pleasant, spaced out set of lights. And it kind of actually, it's kind of cool because it does lead us directly through to the back. So that uh, that's pretty cool. I think that that's a nice uh, compromise um, from what we had. So the first classroom that we are going to make is going to be on the ground level and it's this room to the right. So this is going to be like a computer class. And we are just going to have a bunch of computers in here with some bookshelves and there's no whiteboard or anything. So in this corner of the room here is where we're going to start and we want to place a row of one, two, three light grey concretes extending towards the back of the build. Three grey concrete, three light grey. And then we're going to extend each one of these outwards a row like this. Opposite. On the opposite side of the room, we want to have the same thing starting from this corner. One, two, three, light grey concrete. One, two, three, grey concrete. And then we are going to just leave these last three rows alone. Or you can occupy them with bookshelves instead. So it depends how uh, messy you want this area to look. And I'm thinking we'll just leave a gap of one from the actual top of the room like this. So... We now want to actually make the computer desk. So there's going to be a computer tower on each one of these going old school. So white computer tower, two rows high, made out of white concrete, back left hand corner, polished black stone button, 
extending from the top white concrete blocks. We want to have monitors in the form of a backwards facing smooth quartz stair, one by one painting in front of this, polished blackstone button on the front right hand corner, rail in front of that, and then a seat in the form of a polished deep slate stairs in front of the center, and now we have a little computer station. Nice and easy, and we want to apply this to each one of the other stations in the exact same way. What we then want to do is add some wool to the floor, so just some carpet, it just helps to differentiate all of these different classrooms. So instead of the oak planks, we are going to go with blue wool, but of course this is a personal choice, you can change this if you do want to. And we also want to add some lighting, which can be in the form of anything, you can go for torches, you can go for lanterns, you can apply i mean th there's enough room in here that you could actually apply another level of floor and then actually build something into it if you did so choose that's up to you and you know what i'm also thinking that we might add some uh some paintings here across this wall probably not there we go that will do just nicely so that could of course be anything it's just a nice little bit of ambiguity and we have already placed the door, so there we go. Classroom 1, complete the computer lab. Let's head across the hall here and we can make another classroom. So this is more of a general purpose classroom. First of all, we are going to make the teacher's desk, which would be over here in the corner in front of the chalkboard. So we're going to place a spruce stair with spruce signs either side of it, like this. Then in front of this, a lectern with a, we don't actually have the book and quill with us, but we can actually grab that. Then either side of this, we want to place upside down spruce stairs, and then spruce signs in front of these, including in front of the lectern as well. Then we want to place on this desk here, a lantern on one side and a flower pot on the opposite side. We also want to add the chalkboard, which is just going to be black concrete inside of the pre-designated hole there. Then we are going to make some chairs. So the chairs are positioned on the inward smooth quartz of the windows here, and we leave a gap of one and place spruce stairs in front of them, open spruce fence gates, gap of one, spruce stairs, open spruce fence gates, and then on top of these, brown carpets. And then we want to place bookshelves around the room. So we basically, like in these corners here next to the windows, we'll place bookshelves like either side of these. Maybe they will be, yeah, we'll make them three rows thick so that they are the same on both sides. We'll add another row of bookshelves here just next to this window also. That's looking pretty good. And then we just want to kind of like decorate the walls using um, some paintings once again, because paintings, I mean, they li they literally could be anything. I mean, item frames and stuff are also an option, but you know, paintings are perfect. And then last but not least, we kind of just want to make a... We want to add red wool for the floor that basically just sits around the inside of the floor, so to speak. So we're kind of, you know what, it's actually kind of very reminiscent of the hallway. We want to have a, a border of oak planks around a red wall floor that we probably should have added in the beginning. But you know what, guys, I like a bit of a challenge. Why not? There we go. That looks really cool. And then, last but not least, if you do want to add some torches about the place, then do feel free to light this up. And that is the second classroom. And we can now head upstairs and we can build our third classroom. It actually doesn't matter which side we do this, but why don't we kind of like do it in the same order as we did down below. Let's head into this room, which let's make a music class. So first of all, we're going to fill in the chalkboard area with black concrete again. You could also use any other variation of black blocks or you could have a whiteboard instead, it's kind of up to you. Or go crazy, make it pink. 
So in this room, we are going to have a piano. This is going to be in the form of two looms next to each other, spruce trap doors flipped up next to the looms, and then white banners applied to the wall flowing down into the looms. We also need to add a dark oak fence with a dark oak pressure plate somewhere in front of this. And now we can add some bookshelves. So we want to add a row of one, two, three bookshelves just here in this corner, leading all the way up to leaving a gap of one from the ceiling. And then we wouldn't have one here because of course we have the looms, but one, two, three here, leading all the way wrong work, one row away from the ceiling and leading all the way up here as well. I'm quickly realizing that we could also have another window in here. So I think that we'll actually apply one in a moment. So now we can add some seating for the students. So for this, we will just need, and you're going to see this over and over again, or at least I, I, this is actually the last room that we'll use it, so I probably shouldn't even say that, but uh, we want to use spruce stairs and we will place, leaving a gap of one in front of this bookshelf here, we'll place a spruce stair in front of it, flipped open, spruce fence gate, then a brown carpet on top. We then want to leave a gap of, uh, we can't really leave, we might actually have to place it directly against the bookshelf because it'll bookshelf, spruce fence gate, brown carpet on top, then we'll have to leave a gap and then spruce uh, spruce stair, fence gate, brown carpet on top and then that's perfect and then we can leave a gap of two between this and then place another set just over here to the right and then we could leave another gap of two and then have one here but then that's kind of like in the way of the door so you know it's kind of it's, it's up to you whether or not you want to uh, have that and there we go and as this is a music class we're not just going to have a piano but I mean there's, there's a couple of instruments that we could like kind of sort of make sort of so like for instance like woodwind instruments and stuff is are probably easier like if you use a little bit of imagination like an end rod could be like a recorder or a flute or something same sort of thing with birch fence um i suppose if you wanted to make kind of like a makeshift guitar like you could have like a like a plank of some sort i mean where could we place this maybe like maybe like we could use a, a plank or something similar or a shulker box or something like this hear me out guys hear me out i'm, I'm making this off of the off of the top of my head and um we could use like so a plank item frame in front maybe like rails to look like strings maybe like placed in a particular way and then we could have like a neck of the guitar like up in front of it here and then i mean it kind of but then you, you don't have any strings for this unless there's something that you could add to it but you know what i suppose that that's part of the charm of minecraft a little bit of imagination i i guess that we could even kind of like make a cello but i i don't know how you would go about like adding strings or anything to it so it kind of <laughs> It kind of looks like a gong, I guess, made out of wood or like a giant chocolate lollipop or something. But yeah, you know, yeah, I guess you could get creative. I think that this is probably about as good as it gets. So let's add some wool to the floor. And that that is the computer lab downstairs. Okay, guys, so not only are we going to add some green wool to the floor here, but we are also going to actually add the double layer to the <laughs> to the previous level as well so we kind of want the border of oak like this we'll, we will add the green wall to it and then we will add the oak planks directly uh, underneath this and we will preemptively do it as well for the opposite class we go that's better so this is downstairs and this is upstairs which uh, i'm also going to add some light to as well one over here too and uh, maybe we'll change the colors of these counters too maybe we'll just change them to spruce or something like that well heading across the hall to the final classroom over here we are going to make a science lab 
So first things first, we are going to make a whiteboard in this empty space rather than a chalkboard. So something a little bit different. We have to add a chair in the form of a smooth quartz stair here. Then we are going to place a lectern in front of this and a book and quill in front of that. Upside down spruce stairs next to the lectern with spruce signs in front of these three blocks. Lantern on one block, flower pot on the other. We then want to leave a gap of one between this and then place a row of three, light grey concrete. We then want to leave a gap of one, two, and then have another row of three, light grey concrete like this. We will have these positioned on the opposite side of the room as well. And then we want to place behind each one of the middle, light grey concretes, a smooth quartz stair. And then we want to grab... We actually need a bunch of stuff here, so we need item frames, books, lime candle, red candle, brewing stands. So on like some of these tables, we'll have like a brewing stand and we'll have like candles placed next to this. So we'll have like Bunsen burners and we'll have like beakers and test tubes and stuff. And then on other desks, we will have uh, item frames with books and we can even build up some bookshelves as well. So like right, right next to these tables, just along the back like this. So I guess we could have like rows of two and then we could even like cut into the desk or the desk can be built into it. I think that that's fine either way. And then we'll have a series of bookshelves here next to the door like this. And that's that's looking pretty good. We will have some paintings on the wall as well. So just kind of like in a random manner, something like this. Could we stop placing the same ones? That'd be great. So something like that will be just fine. And then we can have, do we not have torches? So we'll place some torches just on the bookshelves like so. And then last but not least, we will use some blocks of iron for the uh, the actual floor. So kind of like similarly to what we've done before, just right in the middle of the floor, we'll have block of iron instead of a colorful wall. And there we go, we have a nice quick little science lab. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. Please do remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Good.